day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. It says that <clears throat> when it said verse uh, six, that it is in it, like you said, it got to be in your own mind. It says right here, I move forward in over the six. I mean, by four to, four to six, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. <clears throat> they that after the flesh, like you said, do mind what? The things of the flesh, right? But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is what? Yeah, yeah right? Yeah. But to be spiritually minded is what? Life and peace. Because I think, uh, not, if we, we uh, maybe, maybe uh, it might be beneficial to back up and just actually, uh, Maybe take a look at what the dynamic of keeping the law is or breaking the law. Yeah. And uh, what was the purpose of it? I mean, what was the purpose of Christ coming? We were given some some criteria uh, that we weren't able to live up to. And Christ knew that from the jump. Right. But he required that we maintain it nonetheless. And in the case of the Israelites, they were given sacrifices, the blood sacrifices that we established their relationship with the Father, but to maintain the, the, the law is basically is for us to maintain, I think, and I may be wrong, is basically for us to maintain the proper relationship with the Father. Uh, we can't do that aside from certain, you know, certain, certain dynamics or certain things being accomplished. First off, we might have to identify what sin is. Yeah. And uh, then how the law was put there to help us either eradicate or to deal with that situation. And we said that when the law came, it didn't solve the problem of sin. The only thing it did was it made sin more so sin because not only were we sinning, yeah. but we became well aware of it yeah. and couldn't stop. So he gave us the he gives us the he gave us the law. Or the, or the sacrifices in, in, Levitic, in Leviticus. After that, the fulfillment of the law becomes the man Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who for the most part has all of these bits and pieces wrapped up in the one himself. And when we receive him, we receive that reconciliation. He is the reconciliation. Yes, yes. So once we've accepted Christ Jesus, we stand now not as you know lawbreakers, but we stand as sons before the Father, even though we from time to time may break the law or do those things that don't line up with the law. But we still stand as sons. So Jesus came to fix the sin problem, to fix that breach that occurred as a result of sin. Right. So so when we accept him then the law no more exerts authority over our lives. And so when, when I'm listening to Brother Bell, conversation concerning, and you all's conversation concerning the marriages and stuff like that, in Christ Jesus, eradicate, legit. Is that my understanding of it? Right. Since where we're not under the law anymore, but we're under Christ. It would be a situation where we would literally go to Christ and get his 
is important. It's like, Lord, I would like to marry this person in my free to do so. I, you know what? You know what I like. You know I like what Brother Addison read earlier, and I'll put it up here. Uh, Brother Addison, that that one through six or seven, that, that it, sound, it sounds like the uh, you 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 free to marry again, based on. <coughs> can you read one through six? <coughs> Brother Addison. Yeah. <coughs> Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. Uh -huh. <coughs> the law hath dominion over a man as long as he lives. Uh -huh. For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband uh -huh. so long as she lives. Uh -huh. But if the husband be dead, uh -huh. she is free from the law of her husband. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. And then if while her husband lives, uh -huh. she be married to another man, she uh -huh. shall be uh, an adulterer. Uh -huh. If her husband be dead, she is free from the law. Uh -huh. So that she is no adulterer, uh -huh. but she be married to another man. Uh -huh. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the blood of Christ. Come on. That she should be married to another. So we are married to another. He is raised from the dead. Come on. That he should bring forth fruit unto God. Uh huh. Amen. Come on now. So you were in the flesh. The motions of sin with the death were by the law. Yes, sir. Did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. Uh huh. But now we are delivered from the law. Okay. The day wherein we were held, uh -huh. that we should serve the newness of spirit uh -huh. and not the oldness of the letter. So, so what I like about the fact is the reference of married again, and and now I'm married not to the law, but I'm married to Christ. That that tells that kind of the analogy of being able to go and marry again. Because it's even referenced in this one, right? You know, Brother Ben, I said, I'm just saying is that you, I would not be held hey, on the hey, law. Hey, pass, 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 look here. I, uh, like I said before, it's something that I had to come to terms with. I come to terms with a long time ago. So I, uh, 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 so I don't understand why you keep uh, bringing me into, you know what I'm saying? Because I, oh, yeah. I, I, I know this now. I okay. know this now. Okay, got you. And what, what, just let you know what I'm, I was saying is I was just praying you. And this is really goes with other people about other things that we have, you know, issues with. That I'm talking about, I can't get my freedom on anything. Not marriage, not lying, not, not, not anything if I try to do it by the law. Is all I'm trying to say. This, this is what I'm just saying in general speaking. <clears throat> that I need Christ. Well, I tell you what, I still believe that Christian first still had the Bible studies and everything. You can't just sin, sin, sin and go to heaven. I, I mean, I, I, if you try and tell me I can be man, I'm going to be song. I mean, uh, sin, 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 and just die. You know what I'm saying? Just go out there, I, uh, and then die and then go to heaven. That you ain't going to make me believe. I, I think, <laughs> oh, I see, I see what you're saying on that. And that's, that's the point we want to talk about. Is when when is it when is the time that you and I you know we asked that question before, right? When is the time run out for a person to be free when from he dies. going to hell? The time runs out when he dies. Yeah, so that's so so they have a lifetime to work out with Christ. Oh. Oh, I, I, I would not agree with that. Uh, in the sense that I think you have a life, you have the amount of time you have to develop the strength to deal with it. I, I, and, and we talked about that again last night too. Some children rebel. Some children just weak. When Thank I said, I'm talking about us. So it's like, when I decide that, you know, okay, I know this is what God wants, but I ain't doing that. Now, I think time just ran out for me. You know, another person may struggle with like, with me, the, the alcohol, I struggled with that six years. And, but I was struggling. 
He's like, Lord, help me. But, you know, he did it in his own time. And, um, but if I had just walked up in there with the filth and going like, man, y'all tell me what to do. I don't think I could have survived that. Well, see, I think, I think that's I, I, what... I, I, I truly think it's, it's, it's truly an individual, well, you know. Well, I think, yeah. I think that's, what, that's what Paul was saying with some people thinking that he that with, he's trying to say that even that chapter we just ran seven, that for a person to continue to sin, it, it's not giving you the license to sin. What the, the, the point is that you have, you need Christ to help you get out and deliver from all sin. You give you grace to grow. And, 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 you get, and that's what you need is the grace to grow because everybody can repent yeah. in all due season in different things because some people can repent easily from something they never had a problem with, right? I, I, I don't have to repent for alcoholism. But I've never been an alcoholic, right? I I don't have to repent from from still stealing because I don't steal, okay? But how about covetousness? You know, as far as seeing that ten, right? Because that's something that I got to use a lifetime of working on. Don't because tell it. Bible, don't tell Bible, it. Huh? Because the Bible said the Bible says that if you covet, right? Or you look at a woman and lust after a woman, you have committed adultery. Mr. So, he didn't mean that. So, so does that mean does that mean now I got to go to hell because I I, I got to struggle with that? I got to deal with that? I got to overcome that? It's so I think there's something that God is going to deal with in you. Exactly. Um, that's yeah, what that, gonna that's going to that's going to take place. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. All of the areas of weakness of sin, all those works of the flesh, requires a lifetime of work you can i mean all of us got some issues even now that we have to deal yeah. with and, and I, I think and, those, so those issues they become his they're, they're his I, I i remember one said that if i confess my sins he is faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me all of unrighteousness is that what he came down for is his task only thing i think we need to do to be diligent to agree with him when we are sinning that is the one area for me that has become a sticking point because a lot of times we don't address the concept of sin anymore. And so people just kind of like really nearly go about their way, uh, not even feeling the need to make an adjustment. And I think that that's a necessity for our effectiveness in the kingdom of God. Uh, there's some things that we've done that debilitated us as far as our, our uh, facility is concerned. Our uh, usefulness as far as the, 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 the propagation of the gospel is concerned. I don't think our eternal salvation may be impacted by it to that extent, but there are some things that we engage in or have engaged in that have undermined our strength. And we don't address those issues nearly as much now as we have in the past. Right. And well, I what? think that it's a necessity okay. to do it because if you don't do it, it, it still hurts. It, it, right. it, 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 it stops us from being able to do certain things in the kingdom. Yeah. Well, the other point what is that we have, isn't that scripture say that we have, uh, if you send at one point, you send at all points? That's not legit. You mean I don't not, think that's legitimate. You said the scripture is not legit? There's a scripture that said there's a sin that's unto death. I don't yeah. ask that you pray for those. You, the, the, I can't remember exactly where that scripture is, but. Uh, it is gradated, and, and, and uh, exactly what he was saying at that point, I, I, I'm i still investigating that myself, but the reality of it is, he said there were sins that were unto death, right. and then there were some sins that were not. Exactly. What and the we, ones that were not unto death, then we pray for those. But the yeah, ones that were said, don't even bother about that. Now, the question is, another one, because we really talked about the, the uh, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. But yeah, that's one. I'm, I'm saying this saying is is adultery a sin unto death? Is lying a sin is lying a sin unto death? Is 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 stealing sin unto death? That, I'm just asking these questions. But because the fact is we have people that are believers that do lie. And 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 there's people here that have lied on something. There's people who have unforgiveness. Is unforgiveness a sin? Yes. So, so, so if somebody keeps 
living their life. And some people have a whole life struggle of unforgiveness. That, yeah. that, that means they are continually sinning. Yeah. Right? Are we yeah. saying that those people have no hope of eternal life? Mm -hmm. And all I'm saying is that everybody has different, everybody even here. So the bad about it, they just the sin is death. And if if that is true, then nobody can get to eternal life. Jesus Christ's blood has no bearing, can't do nothing for you. And I'm telling you, that is not true. The blood of Jesus allows me to get out of this death and have eternal life through Jesus Christ. Because I'm, I'm too, too many of y'all, too many of us fall short. Too many of us fall short of the kingdom of God. Too many of us fall short. Because you the need to. The sacrifice has been made that the fellowship All might of fall short. Huh? All of us fall short. Amen. All of us.